plant here for a while, right? No. <laughs> Looking at this, what is going on to my east? I've got this clockwise circulation, and sure enough, I am now between tornadoes. I got a tornado to my east, anticyclonic, and I've got one on I-40 to my west. Um, so much for my escape route, okay? So I had to wait and hope that that anticyclonic tornado would move southeast, which it did, fortunately. Because the El Reno tornado is still going, is coming right on down I-40 right at me. And again, look at the notch in there. The circulation, the RFD has surged way out ahead. The anticyclonic tornado is moving off to the southeast, and I am just about to get hit again. So I decided to move east and get out of there. And this is the view of the uh, cyclonic tornado of myself and I-40. All right, so I'm racing out of there at 642 and trying to get ahead of both of these circulations. And then, and then I encounter the blockade in Oklahoma City with all of the traffic in there. And I literally had to make a decision. Do I sit in traffic and maybe get hit by this another circulation? Or do I get out of there? And I, I went to my bailout number two. I turned around and I went north into the core. And that's how I got out of there. So there I am racing off. And that was the, the last shot, 646. So how close did I get? Too close. My five minutes of uh, lead time evaporated. The reason is because the tornado widened, accelerated, and turned to the north all at once. So at 625, you see where it was. At 625, I was beginning to cross a three and a half mile wide track. And at 630, there's where it was, and there's where I was at 630 on the right side. That's threading the needle a little too close. All right, so there's the SPC report. Forecast was good. There were other storms to the south, but they didn't uh, produce tornadoes. That was the tornado of the day. So in summary, a violent tornado developed 16 miles north of my target town. It's pretty good. Forecast. The multiple vortex tornado varied dramatically in size, shape, and forward speed, making it dangerous to chase. Storm chasing is dangerous, but this was even more dangerous. Satellite tornadoes formed on the northwest and southeast inflow jets. So you think you're okay, but then all of a sudden you're hemmed in. You got another tornado, and you're between tornadoes, not good. So my five minutes of, of safety shrank to 90 seconds or less. All right. Now it's time for an epilogue. And one of the reasons why I'm here today is because Tim Samaras asked me to be here. Every year he asked me back, along with Roger Hill. But last year, Tim said, he wants me to come back. So I came back. Tim loved ChaserCon. This was the mecca to get with all of you who are friends, share the same passion. He loved the fact that I looked at ChaserCon a little differently than some of your other speakers. <laughs> can't think of what that is. Not only should Chaser Khan be educational, he totally agreed it should be fun. And Carl, well, you all know Carl. He was fun with a capital F. He loved playing along after each one of these. Yes, I went last year. I was Spark, Spock's half brother. And then, of course, Darth Nader. Who could forget Darth Nader? All right, absolutely. Okay. Well, anyways, I want to tell you about Tim. Tim was really unique. How many of us on a chase day, moderate risk, high risk, 10:30 in the morning, would take time to go through and explain his probes to a bunch of newbie storm chasers that were on my Silver Lining Tours group? He did that here in Watertown, Wisconsin. I said, you know, I don't think we should bother him because it's a, it's a chase day, it's a big day ahead. But then Tim said, no, no, I'll go ahead. Let me go ahead and show these people. He spent a half an hour. He posed pictures with everybody. How many of us are too excited about a chase day to deal with what we would normally think would be distractions? But no, it wasn't a distraction to him. It was an opportunity 
to spread the word. And yes, a lot of these people who are first timers for storm chasers, they remember this day. You know, it's like, look at this. This guy took time and did this. Now, this was in Watertown. You know why we're stopped here. Tim had to grab a cheeseburger. <laughs> It's not my kind of food, but you know, we all have our kind of food. Yeah, he would take a cheeseburger and he would put it up on the dash as a sign of good luck. And I won't tell you where he got the cheeseburger from. <laughs> I'll figure that out. So I'm thinking, wow, cheeseburger on the dash, sign of good luck. Wouldn't it be great? And Karen Hill actually came up with this idea. Wouldn't it be great if we gave a cheeseburger to every single person at ChaserCon? And I said, absolutely. They can put it on their dash. Of course, now wait a minute. This cheeseburger, regardless of how many preservatives it has in it, it won't last very long. Okay? Maybe, not, maybe to March, maybe to April. How about if I contact a novelty company and they make cheeseburgers? What we call, they call them stress balls. But on modern risk day, you can rope one of these things and you can go ahead and then take, take it out. So I had cheeseburgers made for everybody. So around the room now. We have volunteers around the room that are handing out cheeseburgers. These, I guarantee, won't ride away uh, in the near future. And you can do all kinds of things. Roger Hill was demonstrating his unique juggling act out there in the hallway. But he's not a juggler, let me tell you. Uh, but, but you can do a number of things. You know, be inventive, see what you want to do with these, and uh, very much, you know, think of Tim when you're out there chasing. You know, put this cheeseburger up there and say, this one's for you, Tim, and we're thinking about you. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it, everybody. than a gravel or a dirt road, especially since you're getting precip in advance of that. And this goes to say, not only should you have an escape route, but you hopefully have an escape route that's on pavement. Because if your escape route's on dirt roads, you may be in for more of a show. Okay. All right, Roger, I'll hand it back to you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Marshall. Gentlemen from the Colorado areas, I've got to ask a question for y'all. Well, 